right. Okay, I think we're live because my phone just told me we are. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, hey, Only Lovers is on. You want to watch it? I'm like, no, bro, I'm living it. <laughs> this is my truth. <laughs> yeah, I just got the I just got the notification. It's like you are not live. So that also means that I'm subscribed to my own channel. Whatever. I don't care. Yay. I support myself. <laughs> okay. Hi, Internet. Um, we're Only Lovers Book Club. We read romance. That's it. The end. Goodbye. Yay. <laughs> and uh, this month, well, we take turns. And this month was Andrea's turn to pick the book. And so she chose, I don't even have it on me. Uh, the Night Tiger. <laughs> the Night Tiger by Yang Ji. Chu, I may have watched another video before this. Gold one. star. I may have watched Good a video job. before this one to learn how to pronounce it. I literally, the job. minute that you said we're gonna read, I like started panicking because all of a sudden I wasn't sure if I knew how to pronounce her name. So thank you for saving us all. <laughs> First of all, so the video that I watched was of her, the author, mm -hmm. talking. She is really cute. She, she is. is. I posted a picture of the night tiger that I took on my balcony, and she was like, oh, those purple flowers look so nice with the book. And I was like, <laughs> I know. Someone, <laughs> someone wrote on, on the post that of, like, us, of, like, oh, that we're having book club tonight. Uh, she wrote, I just love this book, really love this book. Yanji Chu is uh, a great writer. Everybody should also read her other book, The Ghost Bride. And she answered that and put... Thank you so much. I'm so happy you enjoyed it. And so I'm trying to, I want to write back to her. You got to write back and be like, we already read the, the Ghost Bride and that's why we read <laughs> this. we so excited. You're like, and Christina has been obsessed with finding her own dragon man ever since. <laughs> yes, dragon girlfriend. But yes, <laughs> uh, this book was also just, never mind. Uh, anyway. Um, Trishai's terrified about wa walking, haunting the plains because she like lost a finger somewhere. Oh my god. <laughs> this book gave me um so many of uh, extra fears that I didn't need. I know. It's just a blossom of anxieties. <laughs> but it was really it was really good. I was um moving. I think I think by reading <laughs> by reading her books, we're becoming so knowledgeable about very specific Malaysian like fears. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah, we got we have to talk about it. So I was reading, um, and I was moving, and so it took me forever <laughs> to read forever. it. Forever. Sorry. Uh, well, no, actually, okay, I am sorry, but I'm not like that sorry. I was moving, and then we got a dog, and that's just like been sucking up my whole time. But I got a second wind. I finished it a month later. <laughs> Here we are. <laughs> okay. Um, so, yeah. Oh, Indy's saying hi. <laughs> Andy, there. you've been you've been replaced Sir by, the, by the cuter dog now. Aww. Oh, right. Indy's got character. He's not so easy to replace. Yeah, but he knows that you didn't squeal at him the way you squealed at Zelda. I squeal at Z I squeal <laughs> at Indy all the time, and he like he resents there is, there is, me for it. <laughs> video, video evidence of this. Indy is nauseated by my affection. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he is nauseated by all of everyone's affection. If, all affection. if, Indy, if, if Indy could, he would have left swiped a long time ago on me. <laughs> Zelda's oh. just like... Yeah, she has no idea what... She doesn't even know how to be a dog. She's like... <laughs> ah, 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 ah. Um, I don't have a dog internet, but I shave my hair off. I pick vibes. Yeah, I forget who it was. Uh, one of my coworkers called me Sinead. I was like, ha ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> Sinead O'Connor. Anyway. <laughs> Burns picture. <laughs> Burns picture of Trump. Yeah. Fight the real establishment. Or what, what, I don't remember what you said. Fight, uh, the, real, fight the real enemy. Fight, fight, fight the real enemy. Burns picture of Trump. <laughs> I'm almost sad you didn't do Burns, it. Anyway. Burns chat with Rosillo. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god hashtag que nos pasa Puerto Rico did oh, you man. see did you see the video I sent you the octopus video yes <laughs> <laughs> y'all internet is fire 
It's like okay. a trash bag full of shit. It's like a shit bag. Can we, can we, get, can we pull up a photo of a shit bag? Oh, with, oh, with beady no. little eyes. Oh, sorry, everyone. We put the wrong photo up. Internet. My bad. Andrea doesn't always send like memes or videos. Like not but as when often. When she it, does. Oh, when she does, they are <laughs> all in gold. Every time. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll have to look it up. We'll put it in the in the description. <laughs> Link below. <laughs> Link below. Check it out. For the very small sector of our followers who both speak Spanish and understand the current political gossip of Puerto Rico. Absolutely, yes. That's who. That's, that's <laughs> very, very niche section of memes. <laughs> this is a niche book club, guys. I mean, but the tea but we got to delicious. we gotta give the people what they want. <laughs> what you what you what you want. Drea, why did you pick the ghost bride <laughs> as last You mean month? the night tiger? Oh, okay. <laughs> I um funny you say that because I picked the night tiger because of the ghost bride. Um, oh, holy shit. We read well, we read we read the ghost bride, like Chris said, as book club. And I always think it's really fun. I mean, this author has literally only written two books, and we've now done both books at book club. So I think that's really cool. We still um, but also, I just wanted to break up. I mean, listen, I need to bring balance to this group. Um, Christina's books tend to be very, like, porny. Moist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, also, it makes it sound like my books are. I don't know. Bueno. But... And so, what, I mean, what are you talking like... I will forever be traumatized by Sex Planet. Anyways. Um, so I've I've been trying to uh, <laughs> pick some more literary books, with the exception of <laughs> Peste, Peste Number Two, which is coming up uh, soon. soon. Apocalypse Mutt. <laughs> yeah, no, but honestly, like I really like. I, I did feel like The Ghost Bride was a lot more romantic, and I thought I thought this book was going to be a little more romantic, kind of in the in the same line as Ghost Bride. So that was part of the reason why I picked it. Um, and also just because I love I love the whole Malaysian folklore type thing um, that she did with the first book. And I knew this book would be the same. So I kind of went on a limb. You know, I didn't I wasn't really sure how romantic it would be. Um, oh and, and I do think that <laughs> as a as a pick for romance book club <laughs> um it, it might not have been the best <laughs> but i did still really enjoy reading it and i'm really looking forward to talking about it today yeah yeah I, wait what I'm, what kind of books do i pick is it me panicking and being like guys i don't know what to choose you are like, you are all options? over the place you are just like the <laughs> eternal surprise like i never know what you're gonna throw at me <laughs> we're reading a space opera next time and it's about chickens and the eggs they lay is the soulmate of someone else <laughs> i'm actually looking at our list and i'm like <clears throat> oh, okay cool 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 i see i see what we're reading next. yeah okay. the the next one i picked is like a period piece and then i need to figure out what i want to do after that i kind of want to do a lesbian romance because i feel like i haven't picked one this year, I want. I want to read. I want to read some ladies loving each other, but not in a hospital. <laughs> Cristina Maria. Oh my god. Okay. Um. So that's why you picked it. And yeah. were you gonna give your like general thoughts or like you you I you, can. you? I I didn't know we were gonna read the blurb like we usually do, but I can't because I have no internet and um, also don't I, have the physical book. I have the. I can pull, pull up the Goodreads. If that's okay. Drea, take the wheel. This hangout is yours now. Well, I can't take the wheel because I don't have the Wi-Fi to power the wheel. Okay, like, I'll take words. the I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll take the wheel spiritually. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh my god! Stop. Okay. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> is that even a tiger? That looks. That does not look like a tiger. Is that a? What is that? Is that a bobcat? It says tiger, but it's definitely not a picture of a tiger. <laughs> it's a bobcat. It's fine. All right. <laughs> I'm going to burp. Sorry. That was for you, Internet. Okay. This is uh, from the Goodreads description. Reese Witherspoon. <laughs> Hello, Sunshine Book Club pick. 
Amazon Spotlight pick for Best Book of the Month, New York Times and Publishers Weekly bestseller. Starred Kirkus book list and Publishers Weekly reviews. Oh my gosh, a everyone was excited about this book. Yeah. A sweeping historical novel about a dance hall girl and an orphan boy whose fates entangle or over an old Chinese superstition about men who turn into tigers. When 11-year-old Ren's master dies, he makes one last request of his Chinese houseboy. That Ren find his fe severed finger, lost years ago in an accident, and reunite it with his body. Asterisk, that old man definitely knew where his finger was. I don't know why he couldn't have just told Ren. <laughs> we'll talk about it. <laughs> Ren has 49 days, or else his master's soul will roam the earth, unable to rest in peace. Ji Lin always wanted to be a doctor, but as a girl in 1930s Malaysia, apprentice dressmaker is a more suitable occupation. Secretly, though, Ji Lin also moonlights as a dance hall girl to help pay off her beloved mother's mahjong debts. Ooh, child. One <laughs> night, Ji Lin's dance partner leaves her with a gruesome souvenir. She stole it. A severed finger. Convinced the finger is bad luck, Ji Lin enlists the help of her erstwhile stepbrother to return it to its rightful owner. As the 49 days tick down and a prowling tiger wreaks havoc on the town, Ji Lin and Ren's lives intertwine in ways they could never have imagined. Propulsive and lushly written, the nice tiger, the nice tiger, <laughs> the oh, night no, tiger, night tiger. <laughs> uh, the night tiger explores colonialism and independence ancient superstition and modern ambition, sibling rivalry and first love. Braided through with Chinese folklore and a tantalizing mystery, this novel is a page turner of the highest order. Noise. Noise. That was the book we read. We read that book. Yeah, yeah. It's very refreshing, but have the description. I think, yeah, I think that was actually a pretty accurate, pretty accurate. description. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. So I just double checked on Goodreads, and Andrea gave it five stars. I gave it four stars. Christina gave it three stars. Look. Mm -hmm. I really liked it. Mm hmm. <laughs> She probably hated the stepbrother. I, <laughs> we all hated the stepbrother. And the other doctor, because he was a hoe. Yeah, I don't <laughs> look. Am I going first? <laughs> yes, sure. because you were the lowest reader. <laughs> it took me the longest to read it because of life, right? But then it also took me the longest to read it because it was, it was hard for me to, to power through this book. I felt like the first half of the book was, I didn't know what, I don't know why I was reading it. I was really interested, but I wasn't interested in the mystery of, I don't know how to explain it, <laughs> my words. I was interested in where the book was going. I wasn't 100% invested in the mystery until about halfway through the book. And then I was like, oh. Um, when the stakes got higher. Yes, absolutely. Because before then I was just like, you know, I was just watching like a soap opera basically. Mm -hmm. um, or or just kind of like watching a J drama or K drama where like the main love interest is a jerk. And yeah, I don't even know why she's like so into him basically. Um, I would give my life for Ren, obviously. Um, <laughs> he was the best part of this book. Um, and I really enjoyed it. And I hate that I didn't enjoy it as much as The Ghost Bride because I think that it had a lot of things going on. It didn't have enough wear tigers. <laughs> is, that, is that just me? I was expecting a lot more, but that's not to say it wasn't exciting, but I thought that the supernatural aspects of it were gonna be like more, yeah, more, more present. I think, I think too, like, um, sorry, not to interrupt, but like, I think we all genuinely liked all of the characters in the Ghost Bride for the most part. Whereas here, the characters you like are in the minority. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Just Ren. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, and here, I really like Jilin. I liked her. I don't know if that's how you pronounce her name. That's how I'm, I've had. I was pronouncing it Jilin. Um, I really liked her. I thought she was cute. Um, she needs a 
to meet some more people. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> she needs some, this girl needs some girlfriends. You know, mm -hmm. she needs some girls in her life to steer her. But then again, you know, I think it, I don't know. I, I was down for the romance, but I was also, I was squicked. Not because he was her stepbrother, but because he was a, a piece a of jerk. shit. He was a dick. Yeah, he was a dick. He was, a, he was and dick. you know, like <laughs> I, I'm because they're not actually blood related. They grew up together, so and you know, I at least come from a, schools, right, Tosh, where you literally grow up with the people that you know. You grow up with your classmates for your entire life, like every day. Like we <laughs> knew, I graduated in high school in the school that I went to for 14 years. Yeah. I and knew these people from the time I was five years old yeah. until I was 17. So yeah. Yeah. So the relationship between them, I, I was down because I'm like, okay, you can like be raised with someone and like, you know, in a different part of life, love them in different ways at different stages of your life. But he uh, was, but he was, he was so possessive uh, and like icky and like, he didn't know how to take no. I mean, that scene in the, in the hotel. Oof. It. I was like, this is wrong. You know? also, it, it was also one of those things where he wasn't even like, like passively nice to her in a way where it seemed like he cared about her and then was also cock blocking her. Mm -hmm. He was just like fucking around and yeah. doing whatever the fuck he felt like doing, but then was on the DL keeping her trapped at home until he decided that it was time to trap her. Yeah, and that and that really sucked. I, and I think that it was, I guess, an a, appropriate for the time kind of thing. I just, it just really dampened my, I didn't need him to be like a progressive thinker and a, you know, liberator of women, but I, I felt like he, it could have been, he could have been toned down just a little bit. And I also felt that her, her, the way that she write, wrote her gaze for him was just. He's so hot. He's so gorgeous. He's so perfect, like a beautiful porcelain doll. And, you know, and I was like, okay. So another thing that, that kind of like put me off was that I felt there was a lot of things going on. Not a lot of it connected right away for me. And then it was repetitive. And I was like, uh, okay. And so it took me a while to get to the point where I was reading it because I was actually invested as opposed to this is a reading assignment type, you know, like in my mind, I'm like, I'm just going to push through because I know we're going to talk about it. Yeah. But um, I'd like the, I like the really scary spoopy parts, the dream sequences. I like those. And I liked, I liked any, any scene that had Ren in it was cute and fucking awesome. And I really. Ah, my headphones, the battery just died. Ah! <laughs> So now I'm on the phone and I don't have my headphones. Girl, you, you are struggle bussing tonight. Yeah, I am. <laughs> but um, I can't overall, prende, prende, oh wait, I think Mercury's in retrograde. Wait, is it? I'll look it up. Okay, but just to finish, so you guys can talk about it. Um, I this book would have been a four star for me, but because I like the Ghost Bride so much. I didn't feel like it was fair to give this book four stars and like yeah. have it be in the same like league because I don't think it's a worse book, but I always rate with my enjoyment, like my, at my enjoyment level and like how well, you know, meshes with how I'm feeling. And so I didn't want to, I definitely didn't enjoy it as much as Ghost Bride. Um, that's it for now. We could talk about other stuff, but um, I didn't enjoy it as much. I thought it was a great book and I would, I would recommend it to, yes, it is. Wow. Um, I would recommend it to people to read it. I would recommend, I would still recommend both of these books, but I definitely like The Ghost Bride better. The end. <laughs> Who's next? I could go next. Um, ooh. I ran out of beer. It's okay. I'll get another one momentarily. Ginger ale. You're listening. I have, ooh, I have like cherry vodka. Maybe I'll have a little bit of that. Who knows? Um, okay, so I gave this book four stars. Um, mainly because I didn't a hundred percent ship any of the romantic relationships at all. Um, I wasn't attracted to any of the male characters <clears throat> in any way, shape or form, <laughs> except for having just sweet, uh, pure love for little baby Ren for being <laughs> the nicest, 
most like little rapscallion little orphan boy <clears throat> I ever did meet. Um, uh, Jilin was cool. I thought that she. <coughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> My ears. Sorry. Um, <laughs> I uh, I feel like she was a smart character, but <laughs> Christina's just dying. <laughs> God damn. Way to, way to pantomime. <laughs> damn. Go on. Um, I, uh, oh, Andrea's back. My Wi Fi's back. I'm going to turn off my phone. Oh, yay. Oh, yay. Yeah. <laughs> Why did you do this to me? <laughs> okay. Welcome back. Anyway. <laughs> Damn. Damn. That, that was like. <laughs> that was a lot. That's my, that's my version of my own hell, is me <laughs> hearing everything I'm saying back at me. It's like, oh, God. <laughs> I'm an idiot. <laughs> oh. You're an idiot. Oh no! <laughs> um, what was I saying? Oh yeah. Okay. So Jilin was cool, and I feel like she was a smart character, but not. I feel like she could have been smarter. Like I don't know how to. Yeah. How to explain it? Like how many choices she made were just. Yeah, like she was. She was smart enough to have been able to get to school and do all this stuff, but she's like taking the finger out of this dude's pocket for no reason and then like not really sure how to return it and then every time she was around any any man she was just like flustered like she couldn't just tell that robert to do that she wasn't interested she's just like oh my god oh, i guess i'll go on a date with you to make my stepbrother jealous it's definitely not gonna come back to bite me in the ass oh no i guess now you want to propose to me and she was also like it was one of those things oh my god and it took her so long to figure out that she had to like get the finger back to the grave girl like she was cutting it close it did not need to take her that long to yeah. figure out what she i was to like do. why is this so complicated i was like <laughs> it's why are we still here you there know? was just there were like a lot of mysteries wrapped in other mysteries and it was fun like maybe i'm gonna say like 58 percent of the way through the book i like had pretty much guessed what was gonna happen <laughs> with like knowing who the real bad guy was and like trying to guess what was gonna end up happening and like trying to pinpoint like who had been responsible for what murders. I was like, I feel like this is what's happening. And I would be turning to Ivan and being like, so you have no context for what I'm about to say, but I feel like you can't trust this bitch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He, I, I also was like, there's a red herring here. This is, well, what I think is happening isn't really happening. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But but through all of that, it was like she just kept being the the fact that Ren is the child and he's the most like level headed one and the one able to complete these tasks with like mm -hmm. no support and no one. I really like that. I like that like him. kid detective aspect of it. Yeah. yeah. So I I kind of wish it would have just been him completing his mission. Yeah. And then like maybe joining with Ji Lin and trying to like help her get out of some sort of situation. Like, I don't think I needed the romance with her and her brother. I didn't really need her to end up with some other dude or have any sort of thing with him. If it had been like her with some sort of family drama and then Ji Lin and her become friends and ends up like trying to solve this mystery together and get her out of her situation. And like, you know, he, he, ends up solving the mystery and like the new guy who he works with is like, Hey, I want an apprentice and I think you're really smart. I want to get you into nursing school. Like, I think that could have all been like a nice story arc without <laughs> fixes the plot. <laughs> without... Yeah. Because the whole thing was like the five virtues and they were all connected and messing each other up. So like, you can't take any characters out because then mean... it would mess up. Were they all connected, or was it like that, all uh, a what a great segue to shy? Because that is my first question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that was literally my first question is um, whether you think that the whole five virtues thing unifies the whole book, like because that's how all the characters are related, and that's how a lot of, 
or the explanation given for a lot of the drama that happens? Um, or do you think it's kind of a stretch and feels forced? Like, did it work for you, basically? <laughs> I I think it was an interesting framework that did not deliver as strongly as I would have liked because I was with you up until the white lady is suddenly <laughs> one of the virtues having nothing to do with anything that's been going on other than being a fucking crazy bitch. Yeah. I, I, I felt when, okay. When the, when they, when they started talking about the brother, I'm named after a virtue and my stepbrother is named after this virtue. And then like a, her, I don't know what her, were her chapters first person. They, they were all, they were kind all, of told in the perspective of each different like character. Like a third person, like limited or whatever. But like the, the narrator always referred to these, like always, always referred to these virtues, which made it, corny and not as powerful as it could have been. Does that make sense? Uh, so we kept bringing it up. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we kept bringing it up. And I was like, what the fuck is this? Like, is this is this shit for real? Because throughout the book, also one of them was the ghost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. It's it like- It didn't feel like they were as united as like this like fateful connection had them to be like their connection was flimsy at best, you know. Yes, I yes. feel like I feel like um, maybe a lot of what it is is I'm used to whenever I read books where, um, yeah, characters are connected by some other power or whatever. It always seems like all the characters are reason and then they accomplish something together. So maybe they're like fighting something together, or solving. Whereas in this book, they're never really all drawn to each other mm -hmm. and they never like do anything together. It's just a way of like connecting the chapters, but they don't all, you know, get together and meet each other. I mean, they can't because one of them is dead and they're like in different, <laughs> like it's so, I, I felt like they never really came together as a team. Which I mean, I get this is not that kind of book, but I think for me, I enjoy it more when when that happens. Characters, yeah, when that happens. Yeah, there was no grand convergence of like them, yeah. you know, accomplishing all of this. Connect I, I think the rings. <clears throat> you know, whatever. I also I did, just I didn't understand what this connection was supposed to be because they're like you're all the five virtues. And in my head, I'm like, oh, it's like they're all kind of related. Like they're all part of this one family. Mm -hmm. And then that one doctor is just like, oh, hey girl. <laughs> I'm like, uh, aren't you guys like connected? That doesn't mean, like you're not connected to her vagina. What are you doing? What's, what's wrong? What, walk, go away, go away. Like anytime that doctor showed up, William, is that his name? Yeah. Um, Anytime that asshole showed up, I'm just like, go away. Go get another STD. I also thought it was funny because, I mean, so does that mean, because I mean, a lot of people have these names, right? <sighs> so that must mean there are like other like doppelgangers out, you know, like doppelganger connections out there too. Yeah. It's well, a big country. <laughs> yeah. But also, <laughs> Maybe there's like different clusters, you know, like in yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember that show? I forgot what it's called, but they're like clusters of people. Oh shit, that they're all like in each other's lives and shit, and it's gay. What's it? Called? <laughs> <laughs> mm, it's um, they the had one, like. Is it the one where like everyone feels everything? Every, yeah, everyone's like, emotions and like stuff. Other, yeah, and then they can like make is each it, other. Is it the one hundred? No, no. Oh my God! It's the Wachowski Wachowski show. The uh, people that did the Matrix. Oh, what's it called? It's good. I know. Crazy. I know what show you mean. I understand. I understand what you mean. Damn it. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna look it up. Keep Basically, talking. it's like it's like a show where a bunch of people are connected and they like feel each other's feelings and emotions mm -hmm. and like yeah, and they like every time they all like do it, they all do it. 
<laughs> of course, that would be Chris. Sense8. Sense8. That's Sense8. the name of it. Sense8. Yeah. yeah. Sense8. That's a good show. Watch it, Drea. Have you watched it? No. I don't want to watch it. I haven't watched I heard it was really, really good. I haven't had time to watch it. I've got. I, I recommend it, but it's actually a good. I Maggie still, was talking about it with us. I still haven't seen Stranger Things or Sabrina or. I'm like season four of Schitt's Creek now. Season three. Season three of Schitt's Creek. Yeah. yeah. But um, so there was no grand convergence of these powers or these people yeah. coming together. So it felt that connection felt at first tenuous at best by the end, non-existent. Mm -hmm. And, and then it, so it felt like not important. I'm like, well, why was this even here? You know? And you're right. There must be like a bajillion other people with those names. So like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was just, I was just wondering cuz I think for me though I, mean, I did really like the book, but that was something that I don't know. I, and I didn't know if it was just me like maybe not like getting it. But I mean, it, it, okay, it makes me feel good that like you guys also felt like it was a little flat. As a little, yeah. Well, my second question <laughs> um mm -hmm. is also kind of in line with that and it was about the superstition in the book. Um, but they're, they're always talking. They're always talking about like the lucky numbers and the unlucky numbers, and like this word means this number, and that means you're gonna fall off a cliff. And um, <laughs> no, it's true though. So like, what? Um, how important do you think that was in this book? And I mean, we can talk about the were tigers too, because that's also um, superstition. So I was just kind of wondering because it's so big in this book. They literally talk about. I mean. The number thing, especially, I feel like at least every like ten pages, someone brought up. Oh, a that's number a lucky number. Like, oh, that number's unlucky. It means die, die, yeah. horrible fire, death. <laughs> yes, it was always very cute. And I'm just curious, like, a, what you thought about it in the book, but b, also, like, are you superstitious? Like, in your real life, like, are there things that like you avoid or get weirded out by? Um, in the book, I I really enjoyed <laughs> I really enjoyed those moments because I thought it was a more here because okay so whereas the whereas the name the name connection seemed tacked on the superstition part felt very integral to their mm -hmm. language and their culture and their like their connection like but to like yeah. each other as a people so it didn't feel stupid it felt like of course they would they would think that numbers or you know these words are like you know bad juju because that's i think that's how i am too with certain things you know and it did and it wasn't just including the five of them it's like oh all of these people or most of these people have like experienced or or have like you know believed these things at some point so i thought that in the book that worked as well and i always loved it when when someone kind of like mentioned it it didn't bother me at all whereas whenever they brought up the confusion confusion virtues i'm like what the shut the fuck up about this so, important <laughs> what do you uh, this so is what are you superstitious about chris what am I superstitious about? I don't know. I don't know. I probably am superstitious about something real stupid. <laughs> but plastic, <I> plastic bags <laughs> when you're driving. <laughs> yeah, but those are things that like those could get stuck under your car. That's a superstition. Bitch. <laughs> that's an actual thing. That's an actual thing that can happen. Mm -mm. Stuck in your Never car. heard of it happening to anybody. Literally, only you are ever worried about that. <laughs> Like get up, go into like a different lane. To Christina, like avoid Christina bags. would like sw side swipe a car if she thought she was gonna drive over a plastic bag. <laughs> That's really funny. Uh, I, don't, I, I don't know. Damn, I don't know. I can't think of anything. Hmm. Well, oh, okay. So, <laughs> so sometimes. I think that you know how now like like Lucifer and Satan is, have a, has always been like around right in like pop culture and whatever mm -hmm. but I always sometimes when I like make jokes like hail Satan or whatever I oh, sometimes in the back of my head think of like no hello mi hijo llámalo que velo venir and mm -hmm. I, I'm always like is this the day oh. <laughs> You're like you're like ah! 
<laughs> but also <laughs> Rose Rose Rose. Rose. <laughs> Catholic prayers. Beep, 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 beep. Da, 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 yeah. Da. Um, also, <laughs> if I say someone's name on accident by accident, yo lo cuide. I'm like, oh, um, Dios lo cuide, you know, oh, bless them. They must be on my mind. Something horrible must be happening to them. <laughs> <laughs> so, so um, I'm sure there's more shit, but like, those are the only things that come to mind. So mm-hmm. what do you think, Tosh? <laughs> um, I like, I like the integration of the number, sup- like the number beliefs and the superstitions and stuff, just because that, that is a thing that I know to be culturally true. And like the number four yeah, is very really bad. I read somewhere that she, I don't know if it was like in an interview or something, but I read that she was very conscious about the way that she worded it. Like, like if you were talking about it there in, in their own language, you wouldn't necessarily express it in that same way, like mm-hmm. using the word and the number, but like she did it that way so that it would be easy to understand to people reading in the book. In mm-hmm. English, obviously, with no knowledge of that, while also like maintaining true to, she basically like I guess, <laughs> like simplified it for us mm-hmm. so that it would make sense. To us. And I and I like that she took the time to think about that. Like, hey, I really want to include this in my book. How can I do it in a way that, you know, everyone will understand where I'm coming from? Yeah. Although yeah. now that you mention it, that kind of makes sense because, I, <laughs> were there parts in the book that you felt were kind of like dubbed in English? Not. She writes all her books in English. Yeah. It it did feel like um there are certain like, phrases that like strange that, or like awkward. It's, it's, well, I think I because I think it's hard if you're writing your books in English for an English speaking audience, but your books are set here in this other language and this other culture. I think sometimes she might want to translate things, you know, and they, there's just no easy way. I mean, if you try to translate like all of our Puerto Rican phrases, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's going to sound say. weird. No matter how you do it, it's going to sound weird. <laughs> it's like, I was talking to this woman and she was being very rude to me. And so then I went, you know what? I shit on your mother. And then I walked away. Like there's just, <laughs> there's just some things that are, are going to sound dumb, not yeah. quite as like fluid as they would if you kind of express them and what you're yeah. Guys, can I tell you something? culturally <laughs> specific. We went to this theme park <laughs> and we went on this ride. This has nothing to do with what we're talking about, but mm-hmm. it reminded me of it. And I just think it's really funny. So I'm going to share it with you because <laughs> it's in Spanish. Um, we're on the, um, so I'm the roller coaster enthusiast in the family. My sister is a champ and went on every single ride with me. And we went on the Anaconda. So of course, of course we start singing that. And then my sister, so then we start trying to translate it and trying to like change the lyrics to be in, in Spanish. And she's like, (laughs) sorry, I can't, this is going to be really specifically funny to like no one but me. Um, (laughs) Said, mi anaconda no quiere nada. Mi anaconda no quiere nada de ti, a menos que tengas pan so well. What? <laughs> Unless you got buns. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Internet, pan sobao is a kind of bread you can buy in Puerto Rico at the local bakery. It's delicious. It's sold by the loaf, and you can usually make uh, really good sandwiches with it if you go to the local uh bodega or sandwich shop <laughs> they'll make it with uh local bread and that's the kind of bread that that is you're welcome i always used to translate that as as um massaged bread, massaged <laughs> bread. <laughs> rubbed, rubbed up bread yeah when i would tell people in the states about it <laughs> i was like yeah we have we have two types of bread in Puerto Rico. We have a uh, water bread and we have massage bread. <laughs> Massaged bread. Bread. Rub well, bread. Wow. Or we got okay. we got rubbed up bread. Uh, okay. It's really uh, funny. Uh, <laughs> um but uh, do you have any superstitions? Oh girl, you have no idea the Pandora's box you're gonna open up. <laughs> Give us yeah, a peek to open that. the box just a little bit. I have so many. I have so much neuroses. Like <laughs> 
<laughs> and it's and it's stuff that I uh, have like slowly, you know, when you have lived with someone for like over a year, they eventually start realizing all these little things that you like do for yourself to like calm yourself down. Um, so if I'm stressed out when I'm like walking around, I'll usually count all the steps in between like sidewalk cracks. steps, uh -huh. not even cracks, but if there's like a, like a, like a sidewalk that has stones on it and there's like big gap, like big rocks and then small rocks, I like count all the steps it takes me to get through one. And then I like match it in the next one. And then I match it in the next one. <laughs> and I'll like try to hit, if not the same amount, each one, then the same sequence. So it's like 11 steps, 12 steps, 11 steps, 12 steps. And I'll just, I'll just, I'll be doing that while I'm trying to just like walk somewhere. Um, or like if I'm taking a shower, I'll usually like, oh God. Do it. It's Go weird. On, dive in. I, I'll like, <laughs> I used to, okay, two things that I used to do in the shower. And then, so I used, to, I will still scrub my armpits the same number of times on each side and it's always either 13 or 26 depending on how wow your armpits must be so clean stinky. <laughs> how stinky i am that day because like 13 is my favorite number 26 is my birthday so i'll do like 13 or 26 and then i used to like if i'd be finishing my shower up and like rinsing and everything i'd get like a little bit of water in my mouth and i'd spit like north south east and west before i <laughs> left the shower <laughs> Oh, that's really interesting. I don't know things. I, I, I don't. One. I don't know. I, and I, I don't know when that became a thing. And I feel like I started it off when I was younger as like a joke, like oh, I'm gonna like do this like spell thing or like ritual. And then it, eventually it got to the point where like if I didn't do it, then it felt weird not doing it. I haven't done the spitting one in a long time, but I still do the like washing and the stepping thing. Uh, but these are like your your personal. These are me. This is yeah. me. This is me having like things that I do that I know are like weird, and there's no specific reason why I do them, but I just do them. Mm -hmm. And then lately, uh, the only other like kind of superstitious thing has been if I like think about my family and I get like kind of a little pang, then I'll call them like. I'll call them right away. And just even the other day, it was like nine something at night. We were going to watch a TV show and I got like a little pang and I just was like, I was like, Hey, sorry, I'm going to have to, I'm, I got to call my parents real quick <laughs> just to, just to chat with them. Cause now I'm kind of like, I don't want, as I'm getting older, it's the kind of thing where I don't want it to be like, I thought about calling and didn't, and then something happened. So yeah. now if I think about calling, then I call or yeah. like, or I text. I'm trying to just take advantage of all the time that we all have left on this lovely world. Mm -hmm. And so I'm trying to be more like that. Like, gotcha. Cool. 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 Respond yeah, like respect. responsive to my own anxiety. <laughs> um, I'm looking for a therapist, have a therapist saved on my, on my laptop. <laughs> we'll be, uh, we'll be making an appointment till then book club. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm so mad that I'm going to lose mine. Uh, Drea, what are your oh, super, you what, is, what are you really superstitious about? Oh, sorry. I'm superstitious about losing my therapy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, no, honestly, I've never really been superstitious about anything. I mean, it's weird. Like, I'm, I am very anxious, and I do develop anxiety over pretty much everything but I don't really subscribe to any like superstitions. I, I don't, I'll be like anxious about everything that's like happening in my life or gonna happen, but I don't think it's because I did something unlucky or like anything like that. Um, I don't know, yeah, I've, I don't know. I've just never really been superstitious about well, anything. I guess I am. I think about jinxing things a lot. Yeah. Oh great, I jinxed it. 
<laughs> and I do like I do the salt thing. If I spill salt, Ooh. I'll toss a little bit. I do that too. Yeah. Um, Plus, just doing random what my friends over here call random Puerto Rican magic. I'll be like, I'm gonna write this down on a piece of paper and spill some vodka on it and set it on fire and let's hope for the best. Yeah. No. See, I've never, <laughs> I've never done stuff like that. Well, ah. yeah. We used to we used to write stuff down and then burn it in in a dry coconut at my grandma's house when we thought we were doing magic. <laughs> so stupid, oh my God. <laughs> uh, okay, that's it. What's a good thing to think about? I'm gonna start trying to keep track of the ways that I, you know, that I'm just like, that it's just so normal to me that I don't even think of it as a superstition, honestly. It's just like a thing that you do, you know? Yeah. What about, you what about throwing yourself backwards into the ocean on La Noche de San Juan? Nope. I still try to do that and I walk backwards into done. into I the shower if I can't. <laughs> I, I never know when Noche de San Juan is. The only time I knew what it was was when I was living in Puerto Rico and it's because everyone was like, yo, mama, yeah, yeah. the beach. Yeah, and I'd be like, knew. what? Oh, mom, we're going to the beach tonight. <laughs> no, like even on New Year's, I always say, okay, okay, I'm going <gasps> to cry. I'm going to eat the 12 grapes. I'm going to whatever. But then I, oh, I always never do it. Mm. So, I don't know. But anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> moving on. Um, I don't know. How are we doing on time, Chris? Um, good. Okay, okay. <laughs> we're only, okay, we're going to question number three. Let's do it. I um, mean, I, I, do you have a curfew? I don't got nowhere to be tomorrow. No, 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 no. <laughs> Listen, I'm just checking in. Um, okay. I have to be at work at 9.30, Christina, okay? Okay, so me calm, too, but whatever. I'm waking up at down. four because this one pees every two hours. Um, so oh, my okay. third question was about the women. Um, specifically, I was thinking more about like Jin Lee and Lydia, but I guess we could include her mom too. Um, and I was just, I was just thinking about like the gender dynamics in the book and obviously it's colonial Malaysia and you know, things are really different. It's not like a modern book, um, but, but I was just wondering if you guys thought that you know, what did you think of the women characters? Did you think they were trying to rebel against like society? Did they just conform to it? Because all of the characters do things that aren't considered, all of the girl characters do things that aren't considered like proper, you know, so like Jin Lee like works as like a dance girl and also like wants to study medicine and Lydia is, <laughs> Well, she's a lot of things. <laughs> Try not to <laughs> give away too many spoilers. Um, Bitch. <laughs> um, you know, the mom, even the mom, you know, she's such like a, she seems like such like a stereotypical like woman of the time and like in the advice that she gives her daughter. But then yeah. at the same time, she has all these gambling debts. So like, I don't know. Yeah. Um, so I just want to know what you thought of that, of like the gender roles in the book. Uh, makes me mad. <laughs> uh, um, I thought it was interesting. I thought that it was very true to. I've never lived in colonial Malaysia, but being really? a woman, if being, I had to guess, if I had to guess, uh, <laughs> it sounded it rang very true to me. Uh, the mom character in particular, yeah, I liked that that weird kind of like duplicity in her while still she still remains like a proper mom and housewife or whatever you know she okay you're banging your brother oh, no! <laughs> oh my god yeah but more than more than that more than that it's like oh she gets married she got married for convenience and then put up with like this horrible guy because he didn't don't was he just him. like a dick? He was totally a dick. Did he did he hit the mom? No, but he was like really controlling and yeah. But he didn't. He, but he but he like got into think, fights with the son, and then they got into a physical fight because the son wanted to fuck his sister. And he was like a controlling dick, but he didn't no, like I, I abuse he did. the mom. I thought he did. I thought it was like alluded to that she had like bruises. Yeah, and whenever, whenever Jilin- Accidents. Yeah, whenever Jilin would act out, he would, if anything, like grab her wrist very tightly, you know, like, mm -hmm. <laughs> like he would give her a look and like they would like, you know, talk about it later. And that's, Jilin decides not to act up as much to spare her mom 
you know, the. So that's what I'm saying. I do think that he like was physical with the mom. Yeah, he was. Yeah. So that was my, I interpret as he was abusive. Yeah. Um, but I did think it was funny that she had all those gambling debts uh, because at the end of the day, people gonna people, you know? <laughs> she was still a person, aside from being a woman that wasn't like free to do whatever she wanted. She had to be married. She had to raise these fucking kids. Um, but she still went on and gambled, got herself into trouble about it. And that really humanized her for me. And it really, you know, and Pride and Prejudice, when like Lizzie's mom is just like super fixated on getting her daughters married, and there's nothing really to redeem her. She's just like this hyper like caricature. Well, like this mom could have been that way too, in a way, except mm -hmm. because she had this like gambling flaw. It really humanized her for me. And I actually liked her, not like loved her as a character, but I like that addition to like that, that complex um, relationship and Jilin trying to like help her mom out of this hole that she got herself into yeah. while still kind of, yeah. while still kind of like maintaining with like submissive daughter, mm -hmm. you know, this, persona I mean, with her and in the end it's kind of like ma you better shut the fuck up i paid your fucking debts off i'm leaving like yeah yeah i owe you yeah, I, i'm you fucking my stepbrother but shut the yeah you don't get to talk shit okay yeah exactly and there's kind of yeah so i don't know i i don't even know what to say about lydia to be honest <laughs> <laughs> I, I said she was just crazy. She was just crazy. She like yeah, stalked but, him. Yeah, but I, I just meant like in terms of like if we just look at her as like a woman and the roles that she played, like she was pretty ballsy. Like she was bas she basically forced her way into like an all men's club essentially because she was stalking this dude. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but like motives are high. This is what stalkers do, Andrea. <laughs> They forced themselves. <laughs> she wasn't doing it for the women. If she knew she was doing it for the dick. <laughs> yeah, like I she granted while she was stalking him, she was doing great things for the community <laughs> by like fundraising <laughs> and helping the orphans. Uh, but anyone who she thought he was trying to fuck, she murdered. So like I don't know. <laughs> mm. I like that he was I like that he was kind of going crazy too about it. Like I like that he was suffering so much. He's like, oh, everything I fuck dies. <laughs> I did. I did okay, like that. This is, this is a great segue because my other, my question number four was, do you think that the good acts make up for the bad acts in this book? So for example, take Lydia, AKA murderer and William, AKA pervy predator. <laughs> Um, you know, William saves like a ton of people with his medicine and Lydia like fundraises and does all this stuff, but also they're like really terrible people. So in the end, do you see them as like the bad guys of the yes. book or? Because they're still <laughs> co co colonials. <laughs> they're white people. <laughs> they're who the white. <laughs> and so, no, I think that's Forcing really, I think that's really cool. to cut a block of ice with his tiny hands. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's really cool to talk about it. Not that it happened in real life because yes, I'll, you know, I thought that it was kind of like a whole white savior type of deal. Yeah. They're coming in to help out these poor people and bring, you know, <laughs> and also their knowledge. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, they're meant to, despite their evil deeds or their terrible, you know, their, their, they're the good that they did for for the community is supposed to outweigh it. and I don't and some people might think that but I don't because at the end of the day they're out, they're not supposed to be there period um so that's how I feel about that <laughs> uh, uh, uh yeah I thought they sucked he <laughs> And also, they were they were really annoying and terrible. So he was not, just he was just. I'm not sympathetic. I remember when Tashai started reading the book, and you hadn't read at all yet, Chris, and she was just sending me messages like, "Hi, he's so gross. He's such a perv. Hi, he's even grosser now. He's even pervier." Like, <laughs> <laughs> and because he's like, who like didn't bring anything great to the table. He was just like. 
a horny dude who practiced medicine yeah but because he was a doctor that's his fucking job it's not like he was doing it out of the kindness of his heart like the older man who was helping people in that village you know with health health problems tiger and started eating them i mean you know sometimes when i'm on my period (laughs) no one in my vicinity is safe and i can't help that and it's part of my nature so But no, I think he was a piece of shit and he was just like trying to fuck and really abusing his position of power in a lot of ways because yeah, he real, was real real Chocho San's husband type he, shit. <laughs> see, he <laughs> was he sucks. was he was very much like um using his position of of like status and power to to kind of seduce all of these younger um poor farm girls and taking advantage of their kind of um trust in him because he was this doctor and and why would he ever do anything that would affect their reputation negatively you know like yeah, why would he you know why would I just remembered he fucking killed his fiance too. <laughs> yeah, he did also drown that bitch. He's a shit. He's a piece of shit. I totally, I totally forgot about that until literally right the second. I'm like, wait, <laughs> he definitely drowned someone. Too. He did, which is why he deserves Lydia stalking his ass. Yeah, they were tal para cual, good for each other. Okay. Get him out of here. Get him out of here. He's like, you're crazy. You're crazy. And she's like, you're crazy too. Yeah. (laughs) This was like, this was gone girl. Just like, (laughs) yeah. I know what you did to your girlfriend. I've done it to my boyfriends too. We're meant to be. Mm -hmm. He ate the last of the apricots that my mother brought over so then i had him gouged by a bull (laughs) i just sometimes i hope things happen and then they do i love this voice that you're doing for her what do you mean he did he did keep saying that a lot do you did you think that was true when he said he would like wish things to happen i mean like Yes, okay, the things were happening because like Lydia was going around killing people and shit, but. (laughs) I think it was, I think, I think it was a play on the whole superstition idea. Yeah. And some things only have power because you believe them to have power. Mm -hmm. And Lydia becomes the like physical manifestation of this wishing for things to happen and it's the difference between like wishing and doing yeah she's like oh sometimes i want things to happen they happen and sometimes i want things to happen and i fucking take care of it myself so it's kind of like the conversation between do you want to leave things up to fate and wishing or do you have to sometimes take things into your own hands i think it was kind of they were representative of a different interpretation of this whole manifesting but but Throwing a wrench into that. What about the end where the little ghost boy totally decides who dies and who lives? That was so weird. That was weird, right? I also was like, why is that little ghost boy in this story? He's not really doing a lot. He's just kind of waiting for his brother to die. Don't forget about me. (laughs) I'm still here. Hi. I'm like, oh, are you? (laughs) Hey, little brother. (laughs) <laughs> what are you doing? Why is your hand in your pants? No, oh. <laughs> you're getting older. Don't forget about me. <laughs> and fucking Ren is just like <laughs> trying to cop a feel. Yeah. Um, about I Lydia know. and William, I just thought they were two crazy white people and they were connected in a way that an evil <laughs> that other people weren't connected. In. All right. Well, um, my last question <laughs> was <laughs> do you think that Jillian J- oh my god why can't i see Lynn Hey what G Lynn G Lynn mm-hmm. do you think i've already said her name like 3 times today so i don't know why all of a sudden i got like um do you think that G Lynn and Shin will get married and do you want them to <laughs> no and fuck no 
<laughs> you really wait. You really don't think they're gonna end up married? <sighs> uh, 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 <laughs> I don't want them to, but I feel they like probably they will. Be. That being said, I hope that they don't. I hope that she gets a girl. Friend, not like a girlfriend, <laughs> but you know what I mean. I just like, want her to get a fucking job so she can live yeah, her goddamn like self. Live her life, and I, I want her to try to get a job, and for him to be like, "Why do you need to work?" And for yeah, her to be because, like, "Because I'm a smart person, and I'd be a wonderful doctor." And him to be like, "But you just are like super hot." And then they get into that fight, and then she like moves out. <laughs> they get into that specific fight. Uh, yeah, that's kind of what I hope would happen too. That um, the the infatuation that they have with each other fades away into reality and like okay this isn't sustainable she was a ghost because it's the ghost <laughs> the were tiger um yeah that that infatuation that they have with each other would just like die and then she'd be like oh actually i deserve better than this and then not be with him <laughs> and then he'd be like Mm. I agree. Yeah, I, that's my hope. What will probably happen is it will happen, but she'll be stuck in a marriage with him. And then she'll get into gambling debts too. <laughs> what do you think? That's probably what's going to happen. She's going to end up marrying him and she's going to resent him for having the career while she's stuck being married, having his goddamn kids. She's going to get a drinking problem. <laughs> and she's going to talk to little fucking the little ghost boy and then he's gonna talk her into like drowning herself so she'll <laughs> hang out with him forever <laughs> but oh, she'll, like, she'll like stub her toe on a rock while trying to jump in the river and then she'll become a were tiger and then a little wren will have to come back and try to reunite her toe with the rest of her body <laughs> wren's wren shows up he's like again <laughs> yeah <laughs> again this book was fun though like now that we're talking about it <laughs> It was good fun. Also, um, we didn't really mention the wear tigers, but there we really wanted more of them. There are uh, there are not enough. There are not enough. There, I, I was wanted, really upset. I really <laughs> wanted. I really wanted more of the wear tiger stuff. If anything, it should have been less five virtues and more wear tigers. But you know what? It yeah. was because in the book they had there's so they many super murders. Stickers. Yeah. It was like the superstitions that were like okay for you to have, like the proper superstitions. And then there were like the superstitions that only like uneducated poor people that worked in farms had. And like the werewolves, the were tigers were in that category. Because, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like, right? Like, whenever Ren tried to talk to people about it, they were like, we don't believe in that. <laughs> <laughs> people out that's there who believe in that. That's but the other people, the poor people. <laughs> yeah. It's um, what the Browns believe. <laughs> yeah. Also, I think that it was cool that they would say that the were tiger is a tiger that chooses to take on a human form as opposed to a human that transforms into a tiger. I thought that was cool. But that might also be because I read that Black Leopard yes. Red Wolf book. And that's he's in that book, the leopard is absolutely a leopard that turns into a human from time to time, but still acts and smells as bad as a leopard, apparently. Oh. But also is like super gay and likes having a he, ton of butt sex. That's, that's <laughs> I literally was about to say. Like, is this our next because, book read? Because Chris, I was literally about to say, if Chris had put, picked a book about were tigers, it would be a book in which the were tigers were gay and had a lot of sex. And then you literally said. <laughs> hey, I didn't write that. Marlon James you wrote that. It. And you read it, so you're proving my point. Yeah, I, I, I read the stuff I want and I like to read <laughs> unless it's a book club pick. And then I'm like, oh. that, that'll be me for your pick. So final thoughts. <laughs> I enjoyed the book. I think that I mean I well I don't even think. I know that I will keep reading yeah. whatever else this author comes up with, especially if she stays in the whole like Malaysia 
um, like mythology, folklore mm-hmm. kind of niche. Mm-hmm. Um, I just really enjoy, I just really enjoy both. It's like how, was it last year, Chris, that we, we just read like a ton of like Nigerian magic mm-hmm. books? I was like really into really into it. And it's like it's so specific that I now know all of these like mm-hmm. but anyway, so yeah, so I feel like I'm learning more about the Malaysia of a long time ago through these books and I really enjoy it. If so. you learn and you're growing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what about you, Tosh? What was the question? It final was, thoughts. Said final thoughts. Oh. Just saying, I'll keep reading. <clears throat> uh, I just, I really liked it. I like, I like books that have mystery, but that happen in like a time frame or a country or within a culture that I just like don't have experience with. Because, like you said, yeah, I, I yeah, it's always like end have- up learning about stuff that I never would have learned about. But I, but I get to experience characters that I am. I find compelling and it's like such specific like I never would have known about the whole ghost bride thing I never would have known where tigers are a thing and like will it ever come up in my conversations with anyone yes it will because it already does all the time yes it does we talk about little tigers and dragons and ghost brides I was so excited to find that news article about that woman who married the (laughs) the pirate ghost (laughs) And I was like, I can only send this to Chris and to Shai. They're the only ones who will understand this. I was like, I read the whole thing and I was just cracking up. I'm like, wow. Or was it a video? I don't know. I was just like, this lady would have been my friend. Or this would have been me in another life. I married him, but then he started making me sick. So I exercised my <laughs> and divorced him. Um, I like this book. I'll keep reading this author's stuff. I hope that, because I'm always here for like clue, but with like magic, murder mystery and magic. Can you guess who it's a mystery? Did they get mauled by a tiger? Who knows? (laughs) (laughs) And they're all like the confusion things or whatever. (laughs) It's only decorative. It doesn't really mean anything. Yeah. Um, (laughs) I'm sorry. (laughs) I'm sorry. uh, yeah, I would recommend this book to people. Just a cool, just like a quick, like a quick read. Unless you're me and you take a month to read it. Quick, uh, a quick read, a quick read. Um, yeah. So go ahead and read it, internet. Check it out. I mean, we liked it. One that you want to tell everyone uh, what's coming up next. What's coming up next? You say. <laughs> <laughs> I need to find beep, that beep, fucking beep, book. Beep, 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 beep. I gotta find it. Do you like Grey's Anatomy? <laughs> Do you Do like you lesbians? Like well, <laughs> have I got the book for you? <laughs> I'm kidding. Drea and I went to the Virginia Festival of the Book, and we went to a romance panel. I dragged her to that, and um, there, specifically, I specifically a queer romance. Queer romance, and so we decided that this we needed this book. Because the it was cool and it mirrored stuff in the author's life, and we're just like, how true to yeah. No, no, no. This is what happened: is I wasn't going to buy any book there, but this one author, first of all, she looked really badass. Like it was, she was our favorite. Like during that's the- her. Yeah, and then <laughs> we uh. found out that oh. um, she is a doctor, an ex doctor who is married to a current doctor. And then she has this like Grey's Anatomy type lesbian doctor drama. And, and then we had to buy it. Yeah. I, so, guess I'll, I guess I'll buy it on my Kindle to support her. Yeah, I mean, we bought it at the event, so we, we definitely support her. We, at it. we were like, it's gonna be really medically accurate because it's written by... <laughs> Okay, this is how I looked at it. And then Chris was like, sex, 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 sex. <laughs> we'll see. I don't know. You don't, I haven't read any of it. So Okay, I yeah. just, I either I just bought it. I decided to share the book. So remember Retired. that? I paid half and you paid half. That's so. true. <laughs> we got ice cream. Yeah, after. wait. The doctor's bio on Amazon says that they've written 
and published over 35 novels. Yeah, yeah. that's a lot. Very prolific. Yeah. Wow. I, I don't know. They um, Radcliffe is they them. I think I'm not sure, but but the 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 lit is definitely queer, like lesbian. So here we go. It says passionate rivals. <laughs> One-time lovers, unexpected rivals. Emmett McCabe never expected to see Sidney Stevens, a woman with whom she'd shared a brief incendiary connection before went all up in flames again. Luckily, ascending a cutthroat ladder of high-pressure surgery residency to reach the, the top spot makes it easy to ignore what's missing in her life. Then, Sidney reappears after nearly five years. Emmett is barely over the shock when she discovers Sydney is her new competition for the coveted chief's position everyone, including Emmett, expects will be hers. Professional rivalry and long-simmering passions create a combustible combination <laughs> when the two are forced to work together, especially when past attractions won't stay buried. <laughs> Passionate <laughs> rivals! <laughs> That's our reading. <laughs> I just knew we had to, I knew I had to like pick one of those books to read it with you guys. So that's what I'm reading. It's, it's looks short. I'm going to start it soon and <laughs> give it to Andrea. <laughs> She'll read it. Maybe you should let me read it first. I'm going to read it first. I'm going to get the gold. Okay. Well then while you're reading that, can I have Tokyo Tarareba Girls? Yes. Yeah. I'm done. Wait a minute. What is this? <laughs> Shai, what are you? You're like on a rabbit hole. Let's say goodbye to the internet. And no, because uh, now, okay, so I read about the author and uh -huh. the author's first experience with books that had to do with lesbians was a book called Bebo Brinker. Mm -hmm. And it's a lesbian pulp fiction book. And it's a butch 17 year old farm girl who arrives to beat era Greenwich Village. And now I'm like, maybe this is our next read for me. <laughs> <laughs> girl from the farm moves to New York City and realizes she's a lesbian. Cameron Post? Sounds like fun. <laughs> gotcha. Um, Pre-post. Pre Pre-post. Yes. Um, <clears throat> no, that's it. Can't wait to read it. Ooh. I can't wait to read this like in front of other people. I, <laughs> I almost never have like a like a saucy book. Like the last saucy book I had was that that um do you do you want to start a scandal? Oh, I thought you were gonna say uh, erotic stories for Punjabi widows. No, that one never got. You know what I mean? Like that one, it was easy to ignore. That other one was like, you know, salacious. Yes, it was like you know. <laughs> All right, goodbye, internet. Thanks for sticking around as long as you did. Yes, you did. Indy. Oh my god, Indy. We'll be back next month with the read. Oh my god, please calm down. <laughs> Bye, internet. Bye, internet. Bye. <laughs>